Hey guys, it's Jessie here and today we are going to be doing a monster meal prep cook. Whenever my schedule starts to get a little bit busy, I like to make sure that my kitchen is stocked with ready to eat foods that we can just pop into the oven or microwave. It saves me from ordering takeaway or crossing the street and getting a cheeky 20, I mean six piece nugget meal. Everything I'm making today is perfect for when we're craving comfort foods that aren't necessarily the healthiest, but definitely way better than buying their preservative packed versions from the shops. Plus, I get to sneak a lot more vegetables in this way. We're making lasagna, two kinds of hot pockets, and burritos. Sounds simple? It's not. It is. As long as you write everything out like me. This is our game plan. We're gonna cook everything in order of what takes the longest and needs to rest or cool all the way to having a complete mise en place ready for the fun part. The assembly. First up is the hot pocket dough, then the bolognese, then the hot pocket fillings, then the burrito fillings, then the multi-purpose cheese sauce, and you guys get the point. Sounds like a bit of a mad dash. Well, it is. This is Jesse from Head Over Meals, and let's get started. For our dough, we're gonna need milk, salt, yeast, baking powder, sugar, yogurt, and eggs. Into the warmed milk, add the sugar and the yeast and stir well to combine. Set this aside for now. Into the flour, add the baking powder and salt. Give it a good stir to combine while ignoring this momentary change of scenery. Forget it even happened. Add the eggs to the yogurt and make sure that your container is big enough to hold both before you begin. Learn from my mistakes. Now mix all of that until it's fully incorporated. After a few minutes, the yeast mixture should be fluffy and bubbly which means that the yeast is alive and ready to give us really nice fluffy dough. We're ready to add our wet ingredients into our dry, so make a well in the center of the flour and pour in both the yeast mixture and the yogurt and egg mixture. Start to stir everything together with a wooden spoon, incorporating more and more flour into the dough as you go. If you feel like the dough is a little bit on the dry side, feel free to add a splash of milk and continue incorporating everything together. And when the dough is shaggy and looking slightly more like a dough than just random pieces of flour, tip it out onto a clean surface and begin to knead it. You could technically do all of this in a stand mixer using a dough hook, but it's just so easy to do that I don't even think you should bother. Stretch and push it with the heels of your hands up any bits that have fallen off and kneading it back into the mass. When the dough starts to come together into a nice smooth ball, we are going to set that aside in our bowl and cover it with cling film or a damp tea towel and leave it somewhere nice and warm where it can rest and start to double in size. While that's resting, we're going to work on our bolognese. So over medium heat in a large pot, add a few tablespoons of oil, chopped onions, minced garlic, and saute this until it's soft and starting to brown around the edges. Then we're gonna add our vegetables. Today I'm using capsicum and carrot, and I like to add as much vegetables as I can because you don't really taste it in the end product anyway. Season it really well with salt and freshly ground pepper, and let that cook down and soften. We're gonna whip out our spice rack, edge it just close enough to satisfy the straight line OCD I know you all have, and season this with our favorite herbs and spices. In this case, I'm using Italian seasoning, some garlic powder, chili flakes, and smoked paprika. Stir everything together to cook down, and we're going to set this aside in a separate bowl so that we can cook our meat. Add a few tablespoons of oil back into the pot and add your mince. Today I'm using ground beef, but sometimes I like to use pork and beef mince. Smash everything up and let the bottom caramelize and then continue mixing so that everything starts to get browned through and the meat starts to release all of its water content. Add a few splashes of wine and a little bit of garlic salt, letting all of that liquid evaporate. We're seasoning very lightly for now because as we go, we're gonna be building flavor and we don't want it to be too salty in the end product. We're gonna add the vegetables that we set aside earlier and give everything a good stir tasting as we go. Today I'm using a homemade jarred passata, but anything store-bought like crushed canned tomatoes is fine as well. Just keep adding as much as you need to get it to a nice, thick, but still liquid bolognese consistency. This is now ready to be left on the back burner at a gentle simmer with a lid on while we work on our chicken fillings. 
Today we're gonna to be breaking down a handful of chicken breasts. Yes, chicken thighs are fine and great to use as well. I'm pretty sure these were on sale when I bought them though, so don't give me that chicken thighs are better spiel. We don't do chicken discrimination on head over meals. Slice everything into strips and then into bite-sized chunks, ready for step two. Season the chicken with some burrito spice mix, a little bit of oil, toss and set it aside. For our vegetables, we're gonna take some sliced capsicums, chopped onions and season that with garlic salt freshly ground pepper and toss it together with a bit of oil. These are now ready to go into a preheated oven until cooked and I'll be putting the cooking times and temperatures in the recipe linked here. We're gonna be seasoning chicken number two with some Italian herbs, garlic salt and freshly ground pepper and then tossing that together in the exact same way we did our burrito filling. It's going to go in the oven for about the same amount of time and we are gonna measure out some rice and water and click our rice cooker button. We're gonna be doing a bit of a cheaters, bechamel or mornay today by cooking down some flour and milk on the stove, whisking constantly to make sure there are no lumps. Then you're gonna add in a handful at a time of your favorite cheese, whisking so that everything melts together and becomes a cheese sauce. Depending on what cheese you're using, you probably don't need to add any more salt, but season it with some freshly ground pepper for a bit of bite. By now, the bolognese should be ready and everything can come together to form our lasagna. In a parchment lined deep baking tray, we are gonna start by layering some lasagna sheets that don't need to be pre-cooked, our bolognese, and then our cheese sauce. And then we're gonna repeat this until we hit the top of the tray. If your lasagna sheets don't fit exactly into your tray, just crack them by hand and keep layering as you would if they did fit. We're gonna finish the lasagna off with one last layer of our bolognese and then our cheese sauce and then a healthy sprinkling of shredded cheese as well as a layer of panko breadcrumbs. I really like to put breadcrumbs on top of my lasagnas or anything that goes in the oven because it adds such a nice texture to the final dish. Lucky our oven is already preheated because this is going to go in there as well. To put together our chicken hot pocket filling, we're gonna take our baked chicken that's got the Italian herbs in it and break that down into bite-sized pieces. Because our cheese sauce is so multi-purpose, we're going to be using that as the base for this filling as well. So add that into your chicken along with some minced carrots, frozen peas and frozen corn. We're gonna stir it together and it's going to give us something that's kind of chicken pot pie. Mix everything together and taste as you go so that you know whether you like the amount of vegetables or chicken or cheese sauce in it and can adjust accordingly. I'm gonna be throwing in a handful of shredded cheese as well because we're going for delicious, not necessarily healthy. And then we're gonna set this aside for later. By now, our dough should be doubled in size and extremely soft and pillowy and fluffy. We're gonna punch all of that air out and then tip it onto a clean work surface. Using a bench scraper or a knife, divide the dough straight down the middle to make our two hot pocket doughs and then roll them up into as close to a rectangular shape as you can. We're gonna wrap these in cling film and set them aside until we're ready to roll, literally. By now, the final piece of the puzzle should be ready and our lasagna should be golden, bubbling, and smelling absolutely delicious. And now for my favorite part, seeing everything ready to go like the dough. Salami, ham, pizza sauce, chicken pot pie, tortilla wraps, buttered turmeric rice, spiced chicken, roast veg, cheese, and lasagna. We're gonna start by putting together our hot pockets because while these are baking, we're gonna portion and cool the rest of our food. On a well-floured surface, we're gonna take one half of the dough that we made earlier and roll it out to a large rectangle. Be sure to flour both the top and the underside of the dough so that nothing sticks together. Divide the dough into nine equal rectangles using either a pizza cutter or a knife and start assembling your pizza hot pockets. Grab the egg that you forgot in the fridge and beat it together because this is what we're gonna use to both seal the hot pockets and glaze it later on. Whoops, make sure it's straight. To assemble your pizza pocket, add a few chunks of ham as well as salami to one side of your dough and top that with a couple of dollops of the pizza sauce. Add a layer of cheese and then you're ready to start sealing. 
brush one half of the dough with a bit of egg wash to get it sticky, and then gently pull the other side over. Slowly press the edges down, making sure there are no air bubbles inside. Using a fork, press down on all the edges to seal, making sure that there are no gaps. Admire your hard work and poke a couple more holes on top. This is not only gonna let all of the steam escape while it's baking, it's also gonna show you which flavor is which. Now you just have to repeat this eight more times and you're finished. I'm just kidding, there's a lot more to do. With our second half of dough, we're gonna do exactly the same thing, slicing it into nine. We're gonna put our chicken pot pie filling on one half of the dough, brush the edges with egg wash, pull the dough over, crimp the sides, and then do a different type of dotted pattern on top. To cook the Hot Pockets, you're going to arrange them on a single layer on a parchment lined baking tray, brush the tops with a little bit of egg wash, and then bake for X amount of time at X temperature. They should come out beautifully golden and smelling delicious. Don't freak out if any of the filling spills out, just set these aside to cool for now while we make our burritos. On a soft tortilla, we're going to layer our buttered turmeric rice, our spiced chicken chunks, and our roast capsicum and onions with a little bit of cheese on top. We're gonna spin this bad boy around so we can wrap it properly by tucking the edges in and rolling from towards you to outside you. You guys get what I mean, right? And voila, a perfectly inauthentic burrito that's delicious anyway. Repeat the process until you've finished one or more of the ingredients and take whatever's left, mix it together, eat it with a spoon. This is hard work, we deserve a snack. To finish the burritos, I like to wrap them in foil so that they're ready to pop into a low oven whenever. Wrap it up in basically the same way by pulling the sides in and then rolling up some more. I'm not really sure how to describe it, but you can see exactly what I'm doing on the video anyway. Continue wrapping everything up in foil and you can pretend you're getting takeaway every time you pull one of these out. Now let a big sigh of relief out because we are almost at the finish line. All that's left to do is cut our cooled lasagna into individual pieces and we're ready to relax. Be sure that your lasagna is 100% cool so that it's easy to lift out of the pan and there's no messes. And we're basically done. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like what you see, please drop a comment, like the video and subscribe to our channel. Once again, this is Jessie and I am head over meals for food.